Good morning or whatever time of day you're listening to this. For me, it's morning. I'm Dr. Andre Pines at The Study Doc and I'm trying to build the habit during this social distancing time of every single morning getting up, doing some reading, doing some reflecting, talking with my students, responding to emails, and then bringing that information to you guys via these episodes. And so I hope you guys are enjoying this show. This is the Student Transformation Show and it is all about transforming you guys as students and showing you that you have tremendous potential and teaching you how to tap into that potential. So if you guys are ready to learn today. Today we're going to talk about what I call paralyzing inadequacy. Many of you guys are paralyzed. You're unable to move forward. You're unable to be great. You're unable to succeed and you can't figure out why. We're going to break it down today and teach you how to break free of that peril of that paralysis and get to your success. So let's go guys. But stop making excuses. Stop whining. Stop. Right? Get at it. No excuses. Just dominate. All right, Dr. Pines here. Like I said, this is a student transformation show all about transforming you as a student. And today we're talking about paralyzing inadequacy. And when I talk to students so often, it's amazing to me how the little things that happen to us along our student journey have tremendous impact, not only in that moment, but have long lasting paralyzing effects in our career. And what made me think about this today was that I recently had a coaching session with a student and we were talking about their experience and how they're now, <laughs> fast forward to the end, they're now entering medical school and they wanted to talk about their game plan for maintaining their success in medical school that they've built up um, over the past couple years. And so we had, were having this conversation and then we started getting into the origins of the student before they found me, before they found my courses and kind of what their life was like. And there was a moment in this conversation that I want to bring to you guys and talk about and kind of share their student story with you. And I'll actually be having this student on a later episode of the show, but I thought it would be great to talk to you guys about a particular aspect of the student story that I think is hugely important for you guys as students. And when we were talking, this student has a tremendous turnaround, right? Did terribly in school and has turned everything around, got a 4.0 in their post back, got into medical school. And I was like, well, what was the moment? What led to you turning around? What do you think that was? And why were you so bad before that? And he started laughing and he was like, actually, it's going to sound really weird and really, I don't know if it sounds childish or immature, but I can trace back my failings as a student to third grade. I'm like, third grade? What happened in third grade? And he goes, we had this assignment where we had to write a poem and we had to present our poem to the class and then the teacher graded it. And I wrote a poem. I spent a lot of time on it. I put a lot of effort into it. And I read this poem. And afterward, the teacher pulled me aside and said it was terrible and said, quote, you're no poet. This is bad. You're no poet. And the student said to me that it felt like she was saying, I'm a bad student. I'm not smart. Not you're not a poet. You're not a good student. And the student was saying how this led to thinking that I'm not capable and I'm not good enough. And even when I put in a lot of effort, it's not going to be appreciated. It's not going to be successful. It's not going to be accepted like the other students. And so throughout the student's career, he had kind of a lackadaisical attitude towards school because he felt like if I put in full effort, it won't matter. I'm not smart. I'm not capable. I'm a bad student. And that label. And so often, many of you guys can relate to this. Maybe someone's told you along your career that you can't do something you want to do, that your dream is impossible, that you're a dreamer, and that you got to be more real and more down to earth what's really could happen for your future. And when we have these incidences where people tell us that we can't do something or people label us in a certain way, we don't recognize the tremendous impact this has on our lives. It can be paralyzing and it's what I call paralyzing inadequacy. Paralyzing inadequacy, meaning you feel inadequate. Someone has told you this. Maybe you told yourself you had an encounter that made you feel that way and then you internalize it and then you allow your inadequacy, your self-doubt, your lack of confidence to paralyze you, to cripple you, to put you into a place where you can't act, you can't move forward, you can't even be close to being successful because you can't even take the steps because you feel like it's not going to be enough. Do you guys know what I'm talking about right now? Many of you guys who are master procrastinators like I was, I can testify to this firsthand. The reason I procrastinated so much was that I felt like even if I do the work that I'm supposed to do, I got a homework assignment to do, I got a lab assignment to do, I got whatever. Even if I do the assignment, what does it matter? I'm not that kind of student. I'm not going to get the A, so I might as well have fun if I'm going to be here anyway struggling I might as well have fun you guys you, does anybody else feel that same way where you're like forget it why struggle when I can have fun I'm not gonna be successful so I might as well have fun failing and I felt that way and so when the student told me that that was their attitude I was like man I was in the same boat and so he was talking about how he appreciated the mindset stuff I brought in to my courses and I talked about how you had to break free of the chains of our past failures and for many of you guys your past has you in a full-blown chokehold and is choking you out and not letting you get free not letting you go and be successful and so I try to work 
work with students to break that down. And so for today, what I want to talk to you guys about and have you guys understand is that when we have these failures, when we have these major moments in our life that are, should be moments to celebrate and we get knocked down to the dirt, we've got to learn to dust ourselves off and we've got to learn to frame our past. People often ask me, hey, what's your biggest failure? What's your biggest regret? And other than a relationship I was in in the past that was awful and toxic, I really have no regrets in my life. In terms of academics, sure, I failed a ton of times. But when people ask me if I failed, I say, no, not really. Even though I got an F or even though whatever, like my one F in college is in calculus. And that F taught me that no matter how well things are going, if you take your eye off the prize, if you take your, your foot off the gas pedal, even for a moment, it'll come back around to you. It'll be a quick wake up call, swift kicking the butt and an F. And so when people ask me, yeah, do you have losses? I'm like, yeah, I, I technically lost, but there's no real losing, there's no real failure as long as you don't lose the lesson. So you can lose, but it's not a loss if you don't lose the lesson. And where this kind of came, it's funny because I relate things that are academics to kind of early childhood things. And I, and I guess I reframe it as we're talking about today. But my dad told me about fighting. And my dad's a big guy. I'm the runt of the litter in my family. But my dad is a very, very big guy, former football player, right? Like he's huge. And he's got this big, deep voice like Mufasa and Lion King, like Simba, right? And he's a very intimidating figure. What he said to me was, he said, son, never be afraid to run from a fight. It's like I've run many a time. I'm the big guy in the room. I've still run from fights. Like there's no shame in running. A running is not a loss. He's like getting beat down in a fight you shouldn't have been in. That's a loss. So he's like, you can lose a fight without losing. It's, like, it's not the same thing. And I relate that to academics in the sense that there's going to be times where you have letdowns, where you have setbacks, where things don't go your way. But the successful students, the ones who are going to get to their goal, to get to their dream, who are going to have the A's are the students who are able to take that L and turn it into a big L lesson. And they learn from it and they use it as a springboard into future success. And this is what I call a confidence catapult. So instead of paralyzing an adequacy, we're gonna use a confidence catapult. So we're gonna take a loss and I'll use my example. I won't even use my student's example, I'll use my example. I got an F in calculus. That could be taken as, oh, I'm not good at math. Oh, this isn't my forte, I should just back away or I'm not a capable student. That's how some of you guys look at an F. For me, what I do is that, wait a minute, how is this F my fault? How did I make the wrong decisions? How did I do the wrong things? What can I correct to make sure it doesn't happen again. And I recognize that I was too confident, too arrogant. I was feeling good. I'd gone from being a terrible student to getting all A's. I didn't even have to like blink basically. And then I got to a class, got overconfident, didn't crack the book until the week before the midterm, which is terrible. Didn't know anything on the midterm. And so I had no chance of passing that class. And I recognized that if I had simply just done what I did in all my other classes, which was get started early, front load my term, get to work, be consistent, do what's required, I would have gotten a good grade. And so I recognized that everything that went wrong was completely in my control and I got the lesson from it and there was confidence in that to catapult me forward to future success I ended up passing that class and doing very well getting a B plus whoop, 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 right I was proud of that because calculus is a weird class but I use that loss as a lesson to create confidence to catapult me forward because I recognize that even though I failed I was in complete control and if I did the right things I would be successful and through that that creates confidence right we have a clear path to success that's confidence so for you guys what I want to tell you guys encourage you guys to do is the same thing use your path failures, don't see it as a, the worst day of your life. See it as a great opportunity for you to make sure that that never happens again. For you to assure that every other day after that is brighter and better and is the domination that you want to be. And for me, that's what's gotten me to the place where I always win now. I don't take no L's now. Why? Because I took so many L's early on that I got so many great lessons that my defenses are impregnable, impregnable like Mike Tyson says, right? Because I see all the ways I could lose. And so it's funny because when students get into my study course, or my five pillars of studying let's get a big grades course. Like, how do I know this system's gonna work for me? And it's like, guys, because I've taken every possible loss there is out there. I've worked with every single type of student with disability, with disadvantage, with every issue you have. I've seen that issue. I've worked through that issue. I found the solution and I put it into my system. And so it's funny because it's like, you can't get to me in terms of academics because I've seen it all, guys. No, no, I fell into that lazy trap before. Oh, oh, the tricky multi-complex question. I've seen that trap before and I don't fall for it. So there's all all kind of lessons that lead you to be unstoppable and to be dominant. So I just want you guys to reframe. I don't want you guys to have paralyzing inadequacy. I want you to know that you are enough. You can do it. You can take your failures, whatever's happened to you, whatever someone's told you that's negative about you, and you can use it as the spark that lights the flame and it's the eternal, it's like the Olympic flame, it's the eternal flame of your success. Create a confidence catapult and boom, push yourself over to success unto unstoppable, undeniable greatness. That's what you need to do as a student to transform yourself. And I hope this came off kind of clear. For me, I'm kind of a weird guy, I know, I think about things kind of weirdly and abstractly, but for me it works. And I hope for some of you guys, you get what I'm saying. If you guys understand what I'm saying right now, comment, let me know, send me a message, let me know that you're understanding what I'm saying and you're
you're getting what I'm saying and, and that it, this means something to you and that you're connecting with what I'm saying right now. I'm not just talking to myself and being a weirdo, um, but we want to create confidence in our lives and we can do it. And much like myself and creating this confidence, much like my student who let something in the third grade frame his whole career, even through his entire undergrad, and it wasn't until he decided that I'm going to take action. For him, his story, I'll just quickly go into this, was that he actually was a distance runner and he recognized like, man, I have so much success as a distance runner. Why can't I be successful in the classroom? Well, as a distance runner, I train, I prepare, I give my all. He's like, in academics, I'm not giving my all. And so he re resolved, right? He resigned. He, he said, I will not not give my all. And so he finally, he's like, yeah, I saw your five pillars course two years earlier. I wish I would have done it. But I finally, after I graduated with terrible grades, I decided I'm going to make, the, I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to give my all. Took the five pillars. Two weeks later, he just goes back, gets straight A's. That's the power, guys, of the confidence catapult and understanding that, yeah, we take some losses. Yes, we lose sometimes, but we can win if we take action, if we move forward, if we give it our go, give it our all, we can be successful. Because the reality is, if you guys have read my golden rule, I'll put a link below to it. My free book, my free ebook, the golden rule of student success. One of the takeaways from that book is that your best is good enough. But the question becomes, are you giving your best? Are you giving your all? Are you dedicating yourself to your greatness? My students dedicate themselves to their greatness and so they succeed. Their success is their own success. I guide them, but it's their success because they made the decision. They committed to their greatness and committed to putting in the work required to be that greatness. That's what you guys got to do. All right. So have a great day. Additionally, while you're there, I have lots of free trainings and webinars and ebooks. Go check that out and even consider getting into a course to really have your life transformed, guys. I appreciate you. I thank you. This is Student Transformation Show. I'm Dr. Pineset. And as always, how do we end, guys? No excuses, just dominate. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses. No more complaining. You're going to take your future in your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. Get to my website, studenttransformation.com. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better?